This program is dedicated to those that paid for their lives at the hands of the state. of Silent Voices, the only program here in America that you, the viewer, can express your concerns and voice your opinions on the child welfare system. Uh, today we're going to have a short interview with uh, Deanna Kulstra. And Deanna at one time was the host of uh, Silent Voices. and uh, She has a website out called Abuse Swan and work with women with uh, dom domestic violence who were caught up in the court system. Uh, Deanna also discovered that uh, custody was being sold through the banking systems by her gal and her spouse, the vice president of the bank. Um, I want to welcome to the show Deanna Kolstra. Hi, Dennis and Maria. It's so great to be back on the show. It's been a while since I've been here. Well, Deanna, so uh, you, what have you been up to the last three years? Well, for the last three years, I've been traveling in the South, I'm kind of taking a little hiatus, relaxing a little, and trying to stay out of trouble. So in 2014, I decided I needed to get out of Michigan. I was tired of the cold. I needed some warmth. I had a lot of health issues. My mom had passed away from ovarian cancer. And I started doing some research um, about cancer. I used to watch a video called Chris Beat Cancer, and he would have people come and he has them sit on his couch and he talks about how people have overcome cancer. So I ended up finding a company called Plexus, and they had pretty much everything I was looking for. And it's my understanding that our body needs a detox. And with all these chemicals and GMOs and all that's going on, our body really needs to get all those toxins out of our system. And I wanted something that I really enjoyed that I could refer my friends to. And the product ended up being so amazing. It helps you to lose weight. It helps me to sleep. It takes away pain. Um, it's just been a great product. So now what I'm actually doing is I'm referring it to people who are in the family court system. Because I've been in that crazy system. You get tired. You get stressed out. And on top of that, you can also sell this product to make money to pay for your legal fees. Or if you just need a job, because I know... There are no jobs in Michigan. Lord help us all. And um, so now I'm referring people to Plexus and um, just for the health benefits. And if you need extra income, it's a great opportunity. All right. Well, then I was traveling around. I needed a job. I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And Obamacare came around. And I wasn't sure about Obamacare. I've been in the um, family health and the hospital health insurance. And so I wanted to know what the updates were for Obamacare. So I got a job answering a phone for an Obamacare in Kentucky. And it was really quite interesting. And I started doing some digging on my free time. And some of the things that I discovered was Someone like me who's going against the government, I would not really have very good health benefits. If you need a major surgery or anything like that, you have to do a prior authorization. And then if they decide that they're not going to pay for it, then you have to file an appeal. Most people have no clue how to file an appeal. So then you file an appeal. If they decide that they're still not going to pay for the procedure, then you have to go to 
lovely court system and you just know once I'm there I'm definitely shut down so that was really interesting to go through that I don't know what's going on with the government I personally have not had Obamacare I haven't had any health insurance I think it's been 10 years now I'm a holistic healer I'm into the holistic stuff which is part of the reason why I love Plexus you really don't even have to sell Plexus because once you tell people your story and how amazing it is and how it works for you, it pretty much sells itself. So after a year of hanging out um, in that state, I decided to move to another state. I got even crazier and decided I was going to go into the middle of the forest and I was going to work with troubled youth. And I'm a farm girl. I grew up in Michigan on a pig farm. And I thought, well, this should be pretty easy. Well, I didn't think about the poisonous snakes. I didn't think about the scorpions I've never seen. And um, having some behavioral health youth around snakes is, uh, well, let's just say I'm getting older and my heart's going to give one of these days. So um, I decided that wasn't really for me. But what I ended up learning when I was there was I know a lot about the foster care system. What I didn't realize is that these children, when they're removed from their parents, they go to the same facility that children who are sexually abusive, children who are stealing and robbing things, beating people up, that can't go into the jail system because they're too young. They all go to the same place. So if you have a mom who's really taking care of her kids, but maybe she's smoking weed and they've tested her and they take her kids away from her, you've got these children who are used to a pretty good parent who's putting to bed at night and next thing you know these kids are in a room with four or five other kids who are sexually abusive, um, violent, you name it. So that was something really interesting that I learned there. Um, another thing that was happening there was children's arms were being broken, they were twisting arms, everything, anything they could do to try and get the children not to be put in a hole, which is actually illegal. Um, CPS had been called several times, but nothing happened. And I've done a little bit of an investigation, investigating about that company. You know, I am um, the owner of the company is in very well with the judge. And all through the South, they have businesses. So um, I can't say which business it is, but just know that I am aware of that business and what's going on. And so after that, um, I decided I needed to write a book. And what is the name of your new book? So in 2016, I started a business called Cases. It's Court Assumptions, Secrets, and Education for Success. I took my business products, the Family Court Journal, the Family Court Workbook, I revamped them, and now you can purchase them online. They're downloadable, so you can have them right in your hand. And what I really wanted to do was start teaching people how to investigate the court system and how to expose what's going on. Um, so what I've done is I've taken my experience and what I did to expose the corruption and I now have that in a book that's coming out July 9th, 2017, which actually is my daughter Alyssa's birthday and she will be 18. And so I want to show people how to research, find the money trail, um, keep themselves safe while they're doing it, and then how to expose it into the community on exactly what these people are doing. I believe I'm going to call my book Exposing the Fat Rats, because they're all just fat rats. And what's really interesting is I was doing um, some artwork with the children, and we had been watching a show on how to draw and we actually drew the fat rat so that's actually how I came up with the, the fat rat for the book I've actually drew the picture of it and hopefully when the kids um, are old enough and maybe they see it and they'll remember that we had drew that and uh, kind of remember me and some of the things we had done why while I was working in the mountains with these kids it was crazy but it was interesting and it's really rewarding work. You usually don't see the rewards until a few years later when they grow up and they contact you and they find you. And you can see um, how they've grown. So anyways, Dennis, my book should be out here pretty soon. And I hope you
you all enjoy it. And how can someone contact you for assistance if they need it? Yep, if anybody wants to contact me, you can contact me at 231-412-2737. You might have to leave a message. I'm pretty busy. It might take me a couple days to get back with you. Sometimes it's shorter than that. And um, I also do consultations. I charge $45 for 45 minutes. So if you're interested in talking with me and getting some advice on maybe how to expose some of this corruption before my book comes out, um, you can go ahead and give me a call. I'd love to talk with you. Well, Deanna, I want to thank you for coming back on the show after all these years. And um, I wish you good luck with your uh, new book that you got out. And uh, we'll be looking forward to uh, seeing that. Once again, thanks guys for having me on the show. I really miss you. Hopefully soon I'll be there in person and we can um, do a show together. But until then, you guys stay safe. I love you and we'll talk to you later. Thank you. Now we're going to go to uh, a brand new video by Legally Kidnapped. Uh, this video uh, it was brand new and uh, let's take a look. Good evening. Once upon a time there was a young couple who learned that they were unable to have children of their own, so they decided to look into adopting through the foster care system. My husband and I just found out that we can't have children. He shoots blanks, don't you know? And her eggs are scrambled. So we're going to open our hearts and our homes and adopt a child through the foster care system. So they went down to their local Child Protective Services office to begin the foster care to adoption process. Hello, I'm Susie the social worker. What can I do for you? Hello, we would like to adopt a child through the foster care system. Oh, that's wonderful news. We can get the paperwork started right now and I'll go out to your home to do your home study first thing tomorrow. Thank you very much. This is wonderful. If I can just get one more kid adopted out, I'll get that federal adoption bonus for sure. Meanwhile, there was a lovely young mother with a beautiful daughter named Little Jane. I'm sorry, Little Jane, but your father didn't send in his child support payment this week. So I'm afraid that we won't have very much to eat. That's okay, Mommy. Things will get better soon. I sure hope so. I wonder who that could be. Hello, I'm Susie, the social worker. We got a report that you're neglecting your child. It's not true. My ex didn't send in his child support payment this week, so I can't afford any food. It's not my fault. Likely story. I think you're a terrible mother. Poor little Jean is practically starving to death. I'm afraid I'm going to have to take her away and put her in foster care. But it's not my fault. Please don't take my baby away. No matter. I'll be back soon with a removal order from the judge. So the child protective worker went down to the local courthouse to talk to the judge about taking little Jane into foster care. Good morning. What can I do for you? Good morning, Your Honor. I'm Susie, the social worker. We must remove little Jane from her home right away because her mother is neglecting her by not providing enough food. The poor little thing is practically starving to death. That poor child. Then I will sign the removal order at once so you can take little Jane into foster care and I'll see you and little Jane's mother in family court next week. Thank you, Your Honor. You're doing the right thing. Then the child protective worker went right back to take little Jane away from her mother. I love you, Mommy. I love you too, little Jane. What do you want? You are a terrible mother. We're going to have to take little Jane away. No, please. Don't take my baby away. It's too late. I already have the removal order signed by the judge. Please don't take me away from my mommy. Sorry, kid. You're coming with me. No. Oh, boo-hoo. Then the child protective worker took little Jane to the home of the foster mother who wanted to adopt a child of her own. Did you still want to adopt a child? I certainly do. Well, here's your kid. This is little Jane. Oh my goodness, aren't you the sweetest little thing? I want to go home to my mommy. I will get her mother's rights terminated right away. Then you'll be able to adopt little Jane, and I'll be able to get the federal adoption bonus money. Thank you very much. I'm sure we're going to get along just fine. 
So the next week, little Jane's mother met the child protective worker in family court. I now call the case of little Jane's mother versus Susie the social worker. Your Honor, she's a terrible mother. She was practically starving little Jane to death. She's lying, Your Honor. I'm a good mother. It wasn't my fault. Little Jane's father didn't send in his child support payment this week. I didn't have much to work with. Likely story. It's more likely that she spent all her money partying it up with a different guy every night and doing drugs. That is not true. I am not a slut. And I've never done drugs in my life. I am a good mother, so give me my kid back now. She's lying, Your Honor. You should terminate her rights right away. I already have a family who wants to adopt little Jane. Enough. I have reached a verdict. Little Jane will stay in foster care for the time being. Susie the social worker will come up with a service plan with a series of tasks designed to help little Jane's mother become a better parent. Little Jane's mother must complete the entire set of tasks. And if she does so, she will get little Jane back. We will see how things are going in six months. Little Jane's mother left the courtroom in tears, and the child protective worker went back to her office, raging mad. That stupid judge has to mess up everything, but mark my words, I'll get that federal adoption bonus if it's the last thing I ever do. I just wanted to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Little Jane is an absolute delight. Yeah, well, we have a problem. What's wrong? The judge gave Little Jane's mother six months to get her shit together. If she does, Little Jane will have to go back home. But you promised I'd be able to adopt her right away. It's not my fault. The judge has a soft spot for the real mom. You will still be able to adopt Little Jane. Don't worry about that. It may take a little longer than expected, but I have a plan. What plan? I'd just be heartbroken if I couldn't adopt little Jane. I have just fallen right in love with her. Here's what we're gonna do. So the child protective worker hatched out an evil plan with the foster mother to ensure the judge would eventually terminate the rights of little Jane's mother so that the foster mother could adopt the child and the child protective worker could still be able to get the adoption bonus. Then the next day the child protective worker went to bring the service plan to little Jane's mother. What do you want now? I brought you your service plan. What do I have to do? You have to take a psychological evaluation, go to therapy twice a week, parenting classes, pass a drug test every week, get a job, get better housing for you and little Jane, and get food. And how am I supposed to do all of this in six months? I don't know, but you had better get on it if you ever want to see little Jane again. Meanwhile, over at the home of the foster mother... I want to go home to my mummy. But your mummy doesn't want you anymore. Yes, she does. Look, little Jane, I know it's hard, but your mother just doesn't want you anymore. But don't you worry, because you have me to love you from this day on. But I don't want you. I want my mummy. So the six months went by, and little Jane's mother did everything that she was supposed to do. She jumped through every hoop that the child protective worker threw at her. Then the day of the six-month court date finally came. I now call the case of Little Jane's mother versus Susie the social worker. I trust that Little Jane's mother completed all of the tasks on the service plan? Not even close, Your Honor. Yes, I did complete the service plan. She just kept piling more and more onto it to try to make it impossible. We kept finding more issues. She's lying, Your Honor. She's the one who's lying. Enough. I have reached a decision. I am satisfied that Little Jane's mother completed the agreement on the original service plan and therefore Child Protective Services has 30 days to complete the transition of little Jane back to her real mother. So the now furious Child Protective Worker went back to her office and called a meeting with the foster mother. That stupid judge is screwing everything up. If I don't get this kid adopted out soon, then I can kiss that adoption bonus goodbye. So can we adopt little Jane now? I love her so much. She's just a wonderful little child. No. Excuse me? That damn judge gave me 30 days to give little Jane back to her mother. But you promised I would be able to adopt little Jane. I have poured my life, my heart, and all kinds of money into this to give her the best of everything. Look, it's not my fault. The judge sided with the bio mom. She has been working her ass off to get little Jane back. I threw everything I had at her trying to make it impossible. But you failed, and now I'm going to lose little Jane forever. I can already feel my heart breaking. Yeah, well, I still have a plan, but I'm gonna need your help. So the child protective worker devised another evil plan with the foster mother to convince the judge to terminate little Jane's mother's parental rights so that the foster mother would be able to adopt little Jane and the child protective worker would still be able to get the federal adoption bonus money.
This had better work or I'll expose you for the fraud that you are, pushing through adoptions for the bonus money. Who ever heard of such a thing? Well, this had better work then. Then later that night in the home of the foster mother. Little Jane, do you like it here? No. But haven't I been nice to you? No, you've been trying to convince me that my mother is this horrible person so that I'll want to stay with you. But it didn't work though. I'm not stupid. But what if you could have whatever you want? Anything? Yes, anything. Can I go back to my mommy? Anything but that. But you said anything. Look, kid, I'm offering you the world here. It's just that, well, that child protective worker is crazy. She was threatening to kill your mother if she can't adopt you out. She really wants that adoption bonus money, you know. I don't want anything to happen to my mommy. You might want to think about that when you're saying that you don't want to stay with me. Then the next day, the child protective worker went back to see the judge to try to get him to change his mind about terminating little Jane's mother's right so that she could adopt the kid out and get the adoption bonus money. Your Honor, I have some terrible news about little Jane's mother. And what is that? I'm afraid that after she won the case, she went out celebrating with a bunch of guys, got gangbanged, and did drugs. And then I heard from the foster mother and found out that little Jane had a meltdown when she found out that she was going home. Oh my goodness, that is terrible. Little Jane doesn't deserve a life like that. What do you think we should do? We should terminate her parental rights at once. She certainly does deserve better. Very well then, we will have the termination of parental rights hearing next week. Then the child protective worker went to tell little Jane's mother the bad news. I have some bad news for you. And what is that? The judge has changed his mind and has decided to terminate your parental rights. No, why? Because you're a terrible mother. Anyway, your termination of parental rights hearing is next week. Goodbye. Oh, boo-hoo. Then the next week at the termination of parental rights hearing. I now call the case of little Jane's mother versus Susie the social worker. She is a terrible mother, Your Honor. You should terminate her parental rights at once. She's lying, Your Honor. She's trying to set me up so that she can adopt little Jane out and get the federal adoption bonus money. That's not true. I only have little Jane's best interest at heart. She's my daughter and I've done everything that that social worker has thrown at me. Give me my kid back now. Enough. I want to hear from the foster mother. And what do you have to say? Little Jane never wants to see her mother again. She loves me and wants me to adopt her. She's lying, Your Honor. Little Jane and I had a wonderful relationship. Perhaps she realized how good life could be with somebody who actually took care of her. Enough. Now I want to hear from the foster father. But he has nothing to add to this. Enough. I'll hear from him anyway. My dear sir, I have been listening to these women hooting and hollering back and forth for months now. As the only other male in the room, I beg of you, please shed some rational light on this situation. Your Honor, I am a good Christian man and I used to be a Boy Scout. I cannot tell a lie. So the foster father laid it all out how the child protective worker and the foster mother concocted a fraudulent scheme to get little Jane's mother's parental rights terminated so that the foster mother could have a child of her very own and the child protective worker could get the federal adoption bonus money. Now I know what's going on here and I don't approve. Arrest the foster mother and Susie the social worker at once and give little Jane back to her mother now. You are going to jail. Then there was a huge commotion in the court as a police officer grabbed a hold of the foster mother and hauled her off to jail. The child protective worker bolted for the door and ran out into the middle of the street, which is where I just happened to come into the story. Ah! Wow, man, did you see that? Then later at the home of the foster parents. Hey, guess what, little Jane? What? Your real mother is coming to pick you up and bring you home in just a little while. Do you really mean it? Yes, I do. Mommy! Oh, little Jane, I missed you so much. Thank you so much for telling the truth, Mr. Foster Father. I was happy to do it, but you know, I don't think my wife is going to be coming back anytime soon. How about a date? Sure. So the child protective worker passed away from her injuries after getting hit by the truck. The foster mother got 27 years in prison for attempted kidnapping, and little Jane's mother dated the foster father. They went back to his place where they fell in love and gave birth to little Jane's baby brother nine months later. And we all lived happily ever after. The End
We'll be back after these messages. If you would like to be a guest on Silent Voices, contact us at miparentalrights at gmail.com. That's miparentalrights at gmail.com. I'm from Child Protective Services. I want to thank you, the viewers, for tuning in this week to the, the program Silent Voices. You can catch us next week, same time, same station. Until then, remember, your voice can make the difference. <laughs>